the Red Cross continues to count on the generosity of the community members. We had a great blood drive on Monday at the uh, Calvary Baptist Church. Everybody came in at their appointment time. We had several walk-ins as well, which uh, sat in very, very nicely. We uh, respected social distancing, took everybody's temperature, and uh, it was just, it really worked out very well. We met our patient need number for the hospitals in the community, and um, we were just very grateful that everybody knew exactly that what we needed to do because of this, uh, these uncertain times. And uh, we all know that there's an ongoing need for blood, so I just want to encourage everybody to make an appointment and keep their appointment. If they can't, please call in and cancel that appointment so that somebody else has the opportunity to, to come in. But uh, the blood drives have been going very well. We're also um, continuing to do CPR classes and things like that. We're doing them more virtually in order to be able to respect the social distancing situation. And we are helping communities just not only here in, in Georgia, but really around the world as far as we are the leader for blood products here in the United States of America. And so a lot of other countries are relying on us for expertise and wanting to uh, partner with us in order to be able to help bring this thing to an end as quickly as possible. Uh, we want to also mention that if somebody has uh, experienced COVID-19, and uh, they would like to help out as far as utilizing their plasma as a treatment for somebody who is maybe seriously ill with COVID-19, we'd like them to call 1-800-RED-CROSS, um, talk about their specific situation, and see if they might be a candidate to help us with the, the plasma collection in order to be able to combat COVID-19. There's just a lot going on in our world right now. Um, do you have any questions, Bob? Uh, we have a, a, another yeah, we've got another guest. Yeah. Methodist, yes. yeah, it's, it's one thing people want to know. Uh, we give the information out, but just if people want to make an appointment before tomorrow, how they go about doing making the appointment? They can do it a couple different ways. They can call 1-800-RED-CROSS, or they can go online to redcrossblood.org. And uh, then they, if they're a first-time donor, they'll have to enter a profile. But if they're an existing donor, then it's just, information about their name, their date of birth, and their phone number so we can make sure that it's the appropriate Bob Morgan instead of somebody who is in, in California or something like that. So uh, it's uh, very easy to do. Then we also ask that they do rapid pass, so redcrossblood.org slash rapid pass, and that allows them to answer all of the screening questions in the privacy of their home, and then they can either bring it on their smartphone or uh, bring the paper, print out a piece of paper and bring that in, and that helps expedite their time at the blood drive. We're also continuing to try and, by using rapid pass and pre-registration, reduce the number of touch points at the drive so everybody is a little bit safer and not picking up any germs that uh, may have been left behind by somebody else. Okay, Cindy, we appreciate it very much. Again, uh, we got another guest calling in uh, from Washington, D.C., a lot going on with the government and the yes, small is. business so loans. We do appreciate you calling in. Again, we just want to stress again how important these blood drives are. Uh, as you mentioned, Monday's blood drive at Calvary, they met their goal, right? So what's yes. the goal for Friday? The goal for Friday is 30. Okay, so hopefully we'll get another big crowd. And uh, this is the third one we've had this month. Is that correct? Uh, we had another one well, last month. actually, one of... One of them was postponed. Um, okay. All of the, the blood needs um, that we gather are based upon what, what the patient needs are in the hospitals. So when patient needs go down, then the need for us to collect blood. And being good stewards of America's blood supply, we want to make sure we're always balancing that. And it's not an easy thing to do. So um, maybe we can talk a little bit more about that when I call in the next. Right. We appreciate it. Like I said, we'll continue to promote this blood drive on Friday. We've got on the local news. We'll have it on again tomorrow. Again, tomorrow from 2 to 7 at just the First United Methodist Church. Uh, all walk-ins are welcome. All blood types needed. Cindy, again, we appreciate it very much, and uh, we'll talk to you again. Thank you very much for having me. Have okay. a great day. Thanks so much. Okay. And I just contacted Buddy Carter, asked him to call back in about five minutes, so he'll be calling in shortly. Again, he's got a lot going on up in Washington, D.C., so... Looking forward to talking to the congressman here in a couple minutes. But I do appreciate Cindy Byer calling in for the American Red Cross. And these blood drives are very crucial during this time. 
with all this going on. So, again, good to see that they're meeting their goals. Uh, Monday was a huge success at Calvary Baptist Church, and I'm sure Friday will be a big success as well at just a First United Methodist Church. 2 to 7 p.m. is the time. And if you want to make an appointment, you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS, and the sponsor code is Jessup, and you just punch in right, right and yeah. set up your appointment. So it's pretty easy to do. All right, why don't we take a break and wait on the congressman to call back in. Good morning from the Big Dog WIFO at 8.05. And then a Lockheed Walker Jones. These are difficult times. And at Walker Jones Toyota, now more than ever, we're proud to be your friends and good neighbors. Walker Jones Toyota continues to serve this community. Our doors are open, or you can check out our new test drive from home and home delivery programs. Now you can shop the Toyota that's right for you from the comfort of your very own home. And Walker Jones Toyota will bring that vehicle to you, whether you purchase or just want to take a test drive. And of course, Walker Jones Toyota is the home of the lifetime warranty at no extra cost to you. Good 24-7 coast to coast. We appreciate your patience and support during this unprecedented event. Walker Jones Toyota, Memorial Drive in Waycross, and online at walkerjonestoyota.com. Get the best deal from Walker Jones. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Ends 43020. 806, you're at the Big Dog WIFO. Governor supposed to have another press conference today, you said? No, I said I would just want oh, to oh, it, okay. you know, after he got, you know. He's getting, he, he getting flamethrowered here right, big yeah. time. Yeah, and Mike, you, I don't think he can change course at this time. I he's mean, toast so. if he does. He really is. I mean, uh, you make a decision, you've got to stick with it uh, just, and, yeah. and hope for the best. Can't help to think the politics is all involved in all that mess. But here's Buddy. Uh, get his right. So we're ready to go here. Good morning for the Big Dog WIFO at 8.06. There we go. Good morning. Good morning, Congressman. How you doing? I'm wonderful. How are y'all? We're doing great. Appreciate you calling in after the first guest but again you're back in dc is that correct or headed back that way i am in my office as we speak i mean the story is your there's a big vote today on funding for small businesses you know that's something that's been discussed a lot about the small businesses loans trying to help small businesses get through this pandemic crisis so tell us about the vote today what all's taking place and how do you think it's going to go well as you know thus far we passed three phases of the coronavirus relief package Today is what we're referring to as phase 3.5. It is actually nothing new, but instead it's just more funding for programs that were in phase 3.0, which phase 3.0 was also known as the CARES Act. Today, in the CARES Act, what we did is we created a new program, a program that a month ago did not even exist. It's called the Payroll Protection Program. We appropriated in the first go-round, we appropriated... $350 $350 billion into that program, it's gone. And, in fact, it was gone last week. Unfortunately, the Democrats wanted to play politics, so we've had about a week now where that program has not been able to help anyone unless they were in that initial $350 billion. Well, today we're going to vote. The Senate has already passed it, and we're going to vote today in the House to add $310 billion more dollars to that particular program, as well as add $75 million more to our hospitals, much of which is going to go to our rural hospitals, which is extremely important. There's also another small business administration loan called the EIDL, the, the, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. That's a, a true loan, unlike the PPP, the payroll protection, which can be forgiven. The EIDL is a true loan that we're going to appropriate $60 billion more dollars to it. And we're also going to appropriate $25 billion more to the testing. So all of this is just to enhance the 3.0 that we passed a couple of weeks ago. And again, anybody out there in this crisis small business owners know how important this money is seems like a no-brainer do you think the vote will go through or do you think they'll play politics and it'll be tied up for a couple of days no i do think the vote will go through it's it, as i mentioned earlier it's already been tied up for almost a week in playing politics the, the democrats putting politics over people small businesses need this uh, we've been getting tons of calls in our office from small businesses who didn't Get it, who weren't approved in the first go-round, and hopefully they're going to get improve, approved in the second go-round. 
you know, some of that has to do with you know the the applications, the banks, and and we're actually we're actually earmarking, and I shouldn't say earmark, but but we're actually targeting certain smaller banks to to receive some of this money, so that if those small businesses were working with a smaller community bank, they're going to be able to get those funds now as well. So. If, you know, as you mentioned, you're getting a lot of phone calls from these people. Well, some got it, some didn't. So what do you say to those people that are frustrated trying to get online, trying to get their money, you know, just be patient? Or is there somewhere they can call to get a more direct answer? Uh, what, what would you say to those people? There is. Um, the first thing I would say is don't give up. Don't give up. More money is on the way. We know you need it, and, and we want you to get it because we need our small businesses. Ninety percent of all the businesses in America are small businesses. Fifty percent of all the people who work are work for small businesses. So they are vitally important to our economy. We want them to get that. That's why we created this program, and that's why it's been so successful. The second thing I would encourage them to do, if you've already applied for it, contact your lender. Ask them, what's going on here? Why, why haven't we gotten it? And then finally, if you need us, our office is available. You can call our Savannah office, 912-352-0101. You can call our, our Brunswick office, 912-265-9010. Or you can go to our website, buddycarter.house.gov. Is it another advantage of living in a small town? I'm talking to Bill Workhouser. He said if you're, you know, if you're in a small town, you're working with a small town bank, you're having more success than people say in Atlanta with franchise banks. Is that safe to say, or how do you see it? Yes, it is safe to say, and and I would agree with Bill, and and I would agree with that assertion because what we found out is some of the bigger banks have, have cut it off, saying that, you know, look, we've loaned out all we can loan out. Well, I don't really understand that because they know they're going to get paid. It's backed by the federal government, and, and they're getting a good rate, uh, at least for something that's going to – only last for six to eight months, um, and then they get paid back, and, uh, and they're getting a half percentage point. That's that's really good for that time period. So the banks are going to do fine. I, I know that they're, in all fairness to some of the banks, I know that some of them are, are under a lot of scrutiny, and they want to make sure that they're dotting all their I's and crossing all their T's, and I understand that and appreciate that. But at the same time, these, these loans... The entire reason that we created it and the entire reason we did the the, the CARES Act, the 3.0, was to make sure that money got out there quickly. And we know people need it, and we want to make sure it gets out there quickly. And we've discussed many times on the show, you know, the pandemic crisis, you got the health crisis, and then you got the economic crisis. Just want to get your thoughts weighing in on, uh, you know, the governor of Georgia stepped out. He's opening up businesses on Friday and Monday. The president on his press conference yesterday criticized that, said he wouldn't do it. Uh, just want to get your thoughts and weigh in where you stand on that issue. Well, certainly it's a tough decision, and it's the governor's decision, not my decision. Um, the, the, I think the main point that we need to keep in mind here is regardless of how quickly or how rapidly or how slowly we roll out the economy, how this how this plays out in large part is going to be up to us as individuals. We still need to remember that there's a pandemic out there. We still need to remember that we need to follow the guidelines of the coronavirus task force. That is, we still need to be washing our hands. We, we still need to be practicing social distancing, wearing masks. All of those things are still in effect. Now, just because a hair salon is open doesn't mean you have to go. And, 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 and I know the governor is getting a lot of criticism for his decision, and I can appreciate it. At the same time, if you will remember, I was a mayor at one time, and I, I always felt like I knew more about my city than those people in Atlanta knew about my city. And I wanted, wanted to make local decisions, and that's why I'm glad that he's allowing it to be made kind of at the local level. I think that's much better. Because as I pointed out, and I'm sure you guys saw it, I was on Fox News at 4.15 this morning. I'm sure y'all watched that. But nevertheless, <laughs> um, I, I pointed out that, you know, what's good for Atlanta is not good for Jessup. Uh, it, it not necessarily the same thing. I mean, it may be different. And that's why we have to keep that in mind. 
Now, it's also important to keep in mind that this, in order for this rollout of our economy to be successful, in order that we don't have a relapse, and that is the last thing we want, because if we have a relapse, then it, it makes all our efforts that we put in thus far for nothing. But if we, if we follow, if we have a robust testing system, we need that. We need to make sure that we've got plenty of tests out there and that people are testing. And if you test positive, you don't need to be at work. You need to be quarantined. And that's going to be very important. And so it's going to take a combination of, of technology, that is testing, and just intuitiveness. I mean, and people understanding not everyone, just because the gym's open doesn't mean you have to go to the gym. So even if you do, you got to be careful and you still got to practice the hand washing and the social distancing and all of those things. If you just join us, Congressman Buddy Carter on the phone with us. You know, as you mentioned, it's just indiv- it comes down to individual choice. Uh, the city commissioners had a meeting here Tuesday. The mayor said the same thing. You know, just as you mentioned, just because these businesses are opening, you still have an individual choice whether or not you want to do that. You know, you still, you know, it's all comes down to an individual choice. But you know, as you mentioned, the governor, you know, has made the decision. But as he states, he's not making this decision solely on his own. He's got expertise advice as well. I just want to get your thoughts. Um, He's relying on Dr. Kathleen Toomey, and I just wonder how well you know her. I talked to Bill Workhiser. He, he sang her praises. Uh, do you know her personally, or how well do you know Dr. Toomey? I have spoken to Dr. Toomey uh, during this pandemic on the telephone twice. I have not met her in person yet, but I have spoken to her at length twice, um, once to discuss a, a specific situation in our district and another time to to discuss the nursing home situation. I, as you, if you remember, I was a consultant pharmacist at nursing home for many years, and I called on behalf of the Georgia Nursing Home Association and had a lengthy talk with her. Very impressive. Um, I, I certainly think she understands what's going on, and and I, I appreciate you bringing up that point because I, I know we we all know Brian, our governor, and I'm sure this is a very difficult decision. I'm sure he is. And seeking the guidance of, of those around him and and listening to their to their counsel and and then basing his decision on that. But I think Dr. Toomey is certainly uh, well qualified and and will give good advice. Well, you mentioned politics. I'm just going to throw this out there. This is just my take on watching the president yesterday. Like I said, he he states earlier in the week that he's going to let the governors make the decision. So Governor Kemp goes out there and makes a decision, and then Kemp. I mean, uh, the president comes back and says he strongly disagrees with the decision, kind of throws him under the bus, but I can't help but think about the pol- politics in that because we all know the governor didn't take the president's advice on who to select to fill the seat for U.S. Senator Johnny Isaacson. He picked uh, Kelly Leffler and President Trump won in Collins, so I just wonder if that was just a cheap shot, you know, throwing him under the bus. You know, I want to get your thoughts on that. You know, politics plays a part, so... Is that what took place? I thought the president could have handled it a lot better. He could have just said, look, uh, the governor's making that decision. Hopefully it's a good decision. Why didn't he just leave it at well, that? Yeah, yeah, and, and and certainly, you know, you hate to see your governor and your president, who I, I support obviously both of them, but um, you, you hate to see that happen. But at the same thing, I think what the president was trying to point out is it didn't follow the guidelines that the administration set up. And... And that's what he was trying to point out, is that if you looked at the guidelines that the administration set up for the governors, not, no, they they weren't, uh, you know, etched in stone. You didn't have to follow them, but they did give out certain guidelines, and what, what Governor Kemp has decided to do does go against those guidelines because basically the salons and tattoo parlors and those were supposed to be in phase two, not in phase one. So I, I think that's the point the president was trying to make is that, you know, hey, we set these guidelines. You didn't follow them. But right, and, that, and that's the yeah, basic question. You know, why yeah. not just wait a week? You know, that's the mystery. We talked to Bill Workers on Wednesday. That's the question that people keep asking. Why not just wait a week? You know, why did he? But, again, he said he's going on that. He's going on expertise advice. He just thinks it needs to open up. So it was, just, it was a curious decision on the governor's part. You know, why not just wait one more week? And why not wait to the guidelines? that the president laid out or adhered to. So that is kind of curious why the governor is going a week early. But, again, he's sticking to his gun so far. I haven't seen anybody 
doesn't seem like he's going to backtrack. A lot of people on the national media thought that after the president came out and said he strongly disagreed that the governor would come back and change his mind, but I haven't heard anything from the Capitol today saying that that's going to take place. It looks like he's going to stick to his guns, and they're going to open up tomorrow and Monday. Are you hearing anything yeah, different? Yeah, it does appear he's going to do that. And, and you know, look, we, we need to get back to work, and we want to get back to work. Let's just be careful, and let's just be smart. We, you know, the key here is all of us being smart and, and doing the things that we know we're supposed to do now. Yeah. Like I said, it all comes down to common sense. And like I said, it all comes down to individual choice. I mean, as you mentioned, just because you're open up doesn't mean you have to visit them, but we'll see how it all plays out. Hopefully we can get back to some type of normalcy, and hopefully the governor's making a right call. You know, I got my fingers crossed. I mean, everybody's wishing him well. I mean, I say we know him. He's been a guest on this show. We have got to meet him when he came to visit several times. Uh, you know, hope that, you know, still support him. Hope he does has the right advice and makes the right decision and hopefully things go well that's got my fingers crossed that everything goes well because as i mentioned bill workhiser if they do open up early and things go array or you know go badly then they're going to shut it down for who knows how long that's that's my fear that's, right. that's the fear that's if right. it if it goes the wrong way then they're going to turn around and shut down everything for who knows how long so just got to keep your fingers crossed Hope, like i said people make the right decision and Use common sense, and hopefully it all goes well. I do want to ask you, we did have your opponent, uh, one of your opponents on the air the other day. I know you had a chance to listen to that. I just don't know if you have any response to that. No, not really. You know, we have two opponents in this race, um, and, and certainly there are only two ways to run, unopposed and scared. So we're running scared, and we're going to get our message out there and, you know, all this other chatter that I hear out there from some of my opponents, like one of my opponents in particular, I you know, look, we got a pandemic going on here. I mean, we're spending two and a half trillion dollars here. I mean, I, I've got my plate full right now, so I'm concentrating on on making sure that I'm doing my job, and and I believe that the citizens understand that, and I don't think they're going to be listening to all this chatter out there. Who's this third person in the race? His name's Ken. <laughs> it's Ken Yasker. Yasker is that how you pronounce it? Where's, Yasker. Where's yeah, he and from? I, I've met Ken and sat down and had a very pleasant conversation with him. Very nice young man, and, uh, and I look forward. I think he's got some great ideas. He wants to make sure that the Republican Party is um, very inclusive, more inclusive, and, and I agree with him. We do need to be more inclusive, and uh, very impressed with Ken. I, I think that uh, is he from Chatham you know, County? Where does he live? Um, he he is living in Chatham County now. Yeah, okay. yeah. And and right now he's just he's been called back into active duty. So right now he's um, serving again. So. I got you. Maybe that's why we haven't heard from him. Like I said, but I, I did talk to Dan yeah. Merritt. I said I thought there was a third person on the Republican ballot in that race, and then I got the ballot from probate Judge Tammy Thornton. And, again, it's you, the incumbent, Danny Merritt, and then Ken Yasger. So there's three on the Republican side, and there's uh, three on the Democratic side, Joyce Marie Griggs, <laughs> Lisa Ring, and Barbara Seidman. So the primary is still set for June the 9th. Uh, they have set it back a little bit, but hopefully it will go – in june and we'll go from there but buddy again what time does the vote take place in washington dc well i'm glad you asked that we're actually voting in in cycles um i'm in group a and we're going to be in different groups we're not going to have more than 60 people on the floor at any one time so when my group is called up then i will go down to if i'm in the office by myself right now and um, when my group is called then i'll go down there i'll cast my vote and then i'll i'll come back to my office and um, so we're we're practicing social distancing up here. Will there any be, be any debate before the vote? I mean, is C-SPAN going to cover this? Uh, is there they should be covering it. Yes. Um, okay. I I don't know about uh, no debate. There just is. a vote. Probably just a vote. It, there may be, but everyone's in agreement on this. I, I there may be some nay votes, but I don't think there'll be very many at all. all right. Well, as you mentioned, this money's important for these small business owners. You know, there's a lot of people hurting. A lot of you know, that's the fear in Wayne County. I know talking to a lot of people, that's the biggest fear I hear is you know how many of these small businesses you know, won't be able to reopen. You know, everybody continues to try to support their local business because, like I said, they support everything. <laughs> Every time you turn yeah, around, I mean, that's who gets hit up all the time to support everything else. The small business owners. So hopefully, uh, everybody's doing their part and. 
And Jonathan, I mentioned, you know, every afternoon I pick a different restaurant and go to the drive through or call an order, and every time I go, the line's pretty good. Uh, so you have to wait a while, which is fine, but it's good to see people, you know, supporting these local restaurants and these small business owners as much as they possibly can. So hopefully people continue to do that. Yeah, and, and I've done the same thing. I've tried to tried to visit as many restaurants as we can. So it is very important. Well, buddy, again, always good talking to you. I appreciate you being here on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show. Hopefully we'll see you soon in the district. Uh, stay safe. Uh, how, was the, how was the airport? I'm curious, you know, was the airport kind of busy or, I mean? No, 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 it wasn't busy. I think there were 14 people. On my, I flew out of Jacksonville. I flew out of Jacksonville. Uh, I, I spent yes, yeah, I, I spent yesterday in the southern part of the district in Brunswick and Camden County um, at, at Food Drive. So I was down there volunteering, and I just, Headed on down to Jacksonville and, and flew out of Jacksonville. So I flew with some of the Florida delegation members. Yeah, that's another industry that's really taking a big hit is the airline industry. Yes. And very again, much the so. governor, I saw him yesterday, you know, they talked about Delta being one of the biggest airlines in the nation and it's based out of Atlanta. And he said it's definitely uh, taking a financial hit for sure. So. There's a lot no of people taking a financial it. hit. Like I said, and uh, individuals taking a financial hit. I know we got the one stimulus check. Is there any talk about a second stimulus check? I've heard discussions. Uh, you know anything about that? Well, at this point, Bob, I would have to say that it depends on the rebound. It, you know, we are hoping for a V-shaped rebound in our economy. We hope that it will go up just as quickly as it went down. Now, if for some reason it doesn't happen, then uh, you know, and, and if we have a relapse in, in the in the virus. All of those things. It, it, it just the next the next month is going to be critical to see what happens for the for the long term. It's it's going to be very important. If I could get one last thing in, Bob, yeah, take I just your time. want to give a shout out to our our medical personnel. Listen, our heroes right now are wearing white lab coats. I mean, our doctors, our nurses, our healthcare professionals, our pharmacists. They have risked their own health to provide healthcare services to to our citizens and. I just want to thank them for the work that they've done during this crisis and during this pandemic because they are truly our heroes right now. Without a doubt, you know, can't stress that enough again because those guys and girls are on the front line every single day. So, uh, like you said, hats off to them and thank them. And hopefully, you know, I saw where the governor of New York, you know, or the mayor, I think, the boss here wants to have a ticker tape parade for him, and they said they really just need time off <laughs> before they get a parade. But, <laughs> But again, just uh, you can't say enough about the job those people do. And just before I let you go, the state of Georgia, as far as the pandemic crisis goes, all the testing, all the every you check with all these hospitals around around the state, are they saying they've got enough equipment to handle what they're dealing with right now? Or your thoughts on that? And it's testing another issue. Right, and, and I think that's one of the reasons that, uh, that Governor Kemp made the decision he made is that he felt like we had suppressed the, the, the spike enough and, and suppressed the curve enough to where our hospitals are prepared now. The message that I've gotten from the hospitals in the 1st District is that they're prepared. They've got the room if we do have a surge. They've got the room if we have a spike, and, and they are prepared to handle that. And I think that was part of what... Governor Kemp took into consideration when he made his decision. Before I let you go, go over the numbers again on the small business. Like I said, the first wave is already gone, right? You mentioned those numbers yeah. and the numbers yeah. again. So go go over those numbers again and tell how much money's been put out there, how much money's gone, how much money more money they're trying to put into this uh, loan situation for the small businesses. Well, thus far, we have the first round was $350 billion, and that was, I, I believe it was over one point, excuse me, over 1.7 million loans that, that went out, and it was $350 billion. Now, today we're voting on, on this bill that's already passed the Senate that will allocate, appropriate another $310 billion into that same program. Now, we've got a lot of applications that are, are, are on file now that are waiting. So hopefully this will fill those applications plus any more that, that might come in. But we also took out of that $310 billion that we're appropriating today, we took $60 billion of it and we said 
We want $30 billion of it to go to the very, very small banks, that is, banks that have less than $5 billion in assets, and we want $30 billion of it to go to those banks that have between 5 and $10 billion in assets. Our intention there is to make sure that those smaller banks get to, get to participate in this as well. And once again, if somebody's having trouble getting through, getting their loan, where do they need to call, who do they need to contact, what are those numbers again? Once again, the first thing you need to do is to contact your lender who you put your application through, ask them what's going on. If you don't get any satisfaction there, please call our office. We're glad to help you. Savannah, 912-352-0101. Brunswick, 912-265-9010. And then our website, buddycarter.house.gov. Okay, buddy. I think we'll end on that note. Again, we do appreciate you calling in. Uh, Stay safe up in Washington, D.C. Keep us posted. Uh, Again, we get your uh, press releases all the time and get those on the air. So we appreciate the information. And, again, uh, tough times. Hopefully, as they keep saying, there's light at the end of the tunnel. We're all in this together. Hopefully, we'll get through it. And uh, hopefully, the governor's move Tomorrow and Monday we'll pay dividends, and hopefully we'll see it paying out. And everybody's got their fingers crossed and wishing the best. Absolutely, we, as you say, we are all in this together. And, and Bob, a shout out to you and your industry as well. Y'all have been very important to get the message out, to get the information disseminated, and, and and thanks to all the broadcasters and the print media as well. Okay, buddy, stay safe. Good talking to you. Okay, man. Thanks. Okay, Luke. Again, those comments first. District Congressman Buddy Carter, a big vote up in Washington today. Again, uh, more money for these small business owners. Jonathan, important that they get it. Oh, yes, hard, definitely. Hard to the first way is already gone. I mean, just 300, like three hundred ten billion gone. So um, they're going to approve more money, and so again, hopefully, it'll help these small businesses stay in operation, and keep their employees employed, and that's the purpose of the right. money yes. being. You know, like I said, you hate to see the politics and play, but politics and everything, unfortunately. So. That's the way of the world. That's the way of the world. All right, that's, that's what song says, politics and <laughs> can't say. <laughs> I can't say that on the air. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob show on WIFO brought to you by Nips Car Wash and Murphy Builder Supply. Good morning from the big dog WIFO at 831. Up next, a quick update from Fox News Radio. Good morning at 831. And then a Walker Jones. At Walker Jones Chrysler.